This is problem number seven for section 2.3. And this problem it says, for the given function f of x and values of l, c, and epsilon greater than zero, find the largest open interval about c on which the inequality absolute value of f of x minus l less than epsilon holds. Then determine the largest value for delta greater than zero, such that zero less than absolute value of x minus c less than delta implies absolute value of f of x minus l less than epsilon. So they're just saying they want us to find an open interval around c that allows the, uh, the y values, when you subtract them from the limit, to be within our tolerance of epsilon. So let's draw this out a little bit. We have an x squared function, so this is going to look like so. They tell us c is negative 6. So if c is negative 6, we're actually on this side of the quadratic. So we'll mark that here. This is c is negative 6. And they're saying find a open interval. So we've got two points on either side that when we draw them up will give us y values. And we know that there is a limit here, and they tell us the limit's 36, and that the epsilon is 0.1, so that's pretty tight, right? That's a pretty close tolerance. So this is 0.1, and we know this is 0.1. So they're asking us to find the interval from here to here that gives us the tolerance of 0.1 from the limit 36, and then they're also asking us, what's the delta value that we have to use to ensure that our tolerance is inside point 0.1? So to find the open interval, we need to start with our tolerance of epsilon, which means we need to start with f of x minus l less than epsilon. So the absolute value of f of x minus l less than epsilon, that's going to be the absolute value of x squared minus 36, which is L, less than 0.1. Now, because this is an absolute value inequality, I typically like to write this as absolute value of x squared minus 36 equal 0.1. Solve it and then use the number line to figure out the inequality piece. So that means x squared minus 36 is going to equal 0.1 or x squared minus 36 is going to equal negative 0.1. When we add 36, we get x squared equals 36.1. We take the square root of each side, and x is going to equal plus and minus. So the square root of 36.1, 6.1. And I don't know what they're going to want us to round it to, but let's go 6.00. 83. We'll just round to, to the 10,000th place. Same thing over here. Add that over and we get x squared equals 35.9. Take the square root of each side and we're going to get uh, 5 plus and minus 5.9 Let's go one seven. Now, because we're talking about negative six, the versions of these that we need to use are the negative versions. So we're going to ignore the positive versions. And we're just going to say that our interval is going to look at, because we're surrounding uh, C, right? Which is negative six. Negative six is in the middle. We're going to have negative 6.0083 here. And on this side, we'll have uh, negative 5.9917. If we plug in negative 6, we get negative 6 squared, which is 36. Minus 36 is 0. 0 less than 0.1, yes. So our solutions run from here to here. So our open interval is negative 6.0083 uh, to negative 5.9917. That's part A.
And remember, this is negative 6.0083, and this is negative 5.9917. So for part B now, they're going to want us to find the difference between this value and this value. Well, the difference here for negative point or negative 6.0083 and negative 6, the difference there is, uh, well, we can do absolute value of negative 6.0083 minus 6, minus negative 6, I should say. That's going to give you 0 0.0083. Now let's do the absolute value of negative 5.9917 minus negative 6. And when we do that, we get... Point zero zero eight three as well. So because of the same, we know what our delta value is then. Our delta value's got to be point zero zero eight three. We don't even have to pick between the two because they're the exact same number in this case. So this distance in here, this delta value, this tolerance is point zero zero eight three.